Let me just say this, that you cannot know God through a Bible college or through men's knowledge, intelligence, or wisdom. You cannot know God through these things. Okay? It's foolishness to God. These things are foolishness to God. And so many Bible colleges are going up. You know, so many have theology degrees and all this kind of stuff. So many debate the word of God. But they don't have a true relationship with God. They don't have the Holy Spirit, which gives you knowledge, wisdom, understanding, insight, clarity, and depth in regards to God. It's about walking with God. It's about living for him. This is the way that we know God. This is why when the preachers get up and they preach things, for example, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. They get up and preach this, but they don't have sound revelation from the Holy Spirit. So that that preaching, that word is outdated because it's not it's not outdated, but the way that you preach it, the context that you preach it in is outdated because you don't have true revelation. You don't have true revelation of what that scripture means. Because you don't have insight. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You have not walked with God daily. You have not studied. You have leaned over into your own understanding. Your own intellectual, you know what I'm saying, explanation as to what that means. Your own wisdom. Let me read you scripture right here. It says here. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God to us who are being saved. Now, let's go back to being saved. We know that being saved, <laughs> it's a process, right? That's what I say, will be saved. When you profess out your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ, that Jesus Christ is Lord, you know, that he is the son of God and he died for your sins, then you will be saved. Scripture says it again right here. But it is the power of God to us who are being saved. Being saved is saying that you must remain in God's process. You must continue to walk with God. This is the only way that you become saved, that you become anything. Make O'Shea, you become the righteousness of God. Okay? You become set free. You become saved. You become whole and complete, lacking nothing. It's by God. It's by continuing with God, staying connected to his vine, to his power. Verse 19, it says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will set aside the intelligence of the intelligent because y'all think y'all so intelligent, but y'all don't have true wisdom. You don't have true power and authority. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have true revelation. You don't, you don't because you're not learned. You didn't let God teach you and equip you. Many of y'all got up there and you made yourself a teacher. You made yourself a college professor, Bible college professor. You made yourself a the, the, theologian. You made yourself a, a philosopher. All this, this men stuff. And, and if it's not God made, it's fake. It's false. You are not self-made. It's God who made us. And it's God who makes us and shapes us into his image and likeness. We got to get this. Let, let's look at verse 20. Where is the one who is wise? Question. Where is the teacher of the law? Question. Where is the debater of this age? Question. Hasn't God made the world's wisdom foolish? Question. For since in God's wisdom, the world did not know God through wisdom. God was pleased to save those who believe through the foolishness of what is preached. God want to save you. For the Jews ask for signs. He says, if y'all don't see a miracle sign and wonder, you won't believe. And the Greeks seek wisdom. <laughs> you seek wisdom, but not from God. But we preach Christ crucified 
a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Yet to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is stronger than human strength. So what you leaning over the man for? Why you seeking after a man? Why you putting your trust in a man? Why you seeking after man's knowledge? Instead of seeking God. See, God used the foolish things to confound the wise. He used the foolish things to confound the wise. It's foolishness to God, y'all. Because you ain't seeking him. You're not seeking him for wisdom. And understand, he says, those who want wisdom, let them ask. I taught this in, in uh, my Realities of Wealth sermon. It spoke about the true wealth. And wisdom is, is a true wealth. So many seeking after money. You seeking after the next course and the next thing you can produce. But it's not for God's glory. It's for your own. Because you're not helping those. You're not teaching those. Because you haven't been taught. By God. Let alone called. Let alone proven. Let alone equipped. Trained. <laughs> let alone all of that. Get this today, y'all. Be blessed.